What's up everyone, hope you're all well. Yellow here, and today I got a special one for you. Usually on Saturdays, I just upload some raw gameplay commentary of my first run in the morning. Well, I saw earlier in the week someone had linked a site that showed the cost of all cosmetics in the game, and I decided to add mine up. I had mine up last night, and I was at 198 wins. So I decided I would wake up today, win two matches, and then upload the 200th win. I know there are a lot of people out there with a lot more wins, but I can't play this full time and there are days like yesterday where I don't even end up playing at all. Sometimes I have to make a video or get content out, so to me 200 wins is a lot. Honestly though, I really lucked out as run ended up being really good. I have a pretty crazy hexagon final at the end that I really recommend sticking around for, and I am going to commentate the entire run. So before we get into that, if you enjoyed the video, drop it a like, and if you're new here and want to see more detailed Fall Guys content going forward, please subscribe. It really helps the channel out, and I'm getting very close to a thousand subscribers, and it would really mean a lot to me to hit that number before Season 2. So that's it, that's my intro, let's go ahead and get into the commentary. I'm going to watch everything with you guys and just commentate on it. This is still going to be a raw commentary, so hopefully it goes well, hopefully you guys enjoy the run. So, looks like we start off with Dizzy Heights. When I'm starting in the front here, I actually like to go to the right side, just because I feel like not as many people go there. So I'm going to go to the right, I'm going to jump as far as I can. Very simple. The arrows are pointing all the right direction, so I'm good. I see the arrows to the left here are actually going to be the better ones to take, that way you don't have to take as long around. And I could bunny hop here, but it wouldn't have mattered, I probably would have got hit by the ball. So I go ahead and I dive under this, that way I can keep moving. Everything's going well so far, very good, clean run. And then, again, here with the patch, you never know what the right route is going to be to take. This ends up being the pre-patch route, which ends up working out great. Onto it, and I have Big Yeetus here in front of me. Now, if you didn't see my Big Yeetus guide yesterday, you just want to run up to the right, jump, and then get hit, you're good. You, don't, you just always run up to the side of Big Yeetus, and then jump a little bit to the left or right, and you should be good going in. So that's going to be it for uh, the first run. We got a little bit here. So let's talk a little bit about the new patch. So I don't know if you guys have been having more wins, less wins. I definitely feel like the patch has made it harder to get infallible. So if you don't have that yet, it's kind of unfortunate. Hopefully, you know, you can pick that up. But I think the most wins I've gotten in a row since the patch is actually three. Now that could obviously change, I could get really lucky and just have a crazy run, which does happen. I mean, my two best runs so far are 8 and 7, and then I've got a whole bunch of 4 wins in a row. But I've never had exactly a 5 or a 6, it's literally been 8 and 7. So who knows, maybe I'll get another run like that and I can upload it for you guys since I wasn't really recording those back then. So it looks like the next match we're going to get is Seesaw. I believe we get a variant seesaw where it's two seesaws at the beginning, but let's take a look. All right, so we're doing the flyover and then yes, looks like we have two different routes at the beginning. Now I start front left, so I just decide to go left. It's not a big deal. You can go whichever direction you want. As always, once you get to where the seesaws are tilting, you just want to jump dive. That's going to help you out here. Um, it's a very good run. I believe I end up finishing third. I probably should have dove there, but again, not a big deal. You just fall over. Sometimes I can't tell if I'm high enough to not fall over when I'm walking off that. But yeah, ends up being a very easy seesaw run. There's no vertical seesaws, which I found is really the hardest part of the new changes. And I think I actually, on this one, I end up missing it. Yep. <laughs> I probably should have walked up a little higher, but I was so close. Oh, I actually, thinking about it, I got third on my 199th win on Seesaw. On this one, I think I end up finishing like 10th or something. So, pretty easy run from here. There's nothing else that really happens or has changed. So, I'll go ahead and start talking about what's going to be happening this upcoming week. Uh, this week, going forward... I am going to be launching a Discord, I don't know exactly what day, I know I mentioned that in my video yesterday, but on Monday, I'm finally going to be releasing my third advanced movement guide, that's going to be covering a lot of information such as why you fall, when you fall, 
It's going to be going over some different grabbing techniques that you'll see actually on the final run in Hexagon here. I grab a guy and that ends up being part of the reason that I'm able to cut him off and keep jumping. Um, it's going to cover quite a bit. I don't remember exactly, but it's like six or seven points. It's going to cover the Hexagon glitches. It's going to cover the Jump Showdown glitch. It's going to cover quite a bit, and I think I'm dropping that on Monday. It, it might be Tuesday, but it's probably going to be Monday. So that, that should be a pretty good video. My advanced movement videos have definitely been my best. I think my first one I ever made is at like 4,500 views, and my second one, which is the in-depth grabbing guide, that one hit like 8,000 views. So those are definitely my best performing videos, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I put a lot of work into those. So let's see what level we get next. I actually don't remember. I think it's Block Party? Yeah, okay. So I've been putting the glitch in Block Party in a lot of my videos. I do do it quite a bit just because it's fun. But in this run, I just decided to do the run like normal. I didn't want to have that be part of my 200th win. And really, Block Party is easy enough to win on anyway. So it's not really a big deal. So with Black Party, you guys know how I like to do it. I typically like to stay, you know, halfway to 75% up the platform once it gets down to like 40 seconds. Until then, you know, it's pretty easy. I think Black Party is one of the harder levels to get eliminated on, honestly. If someone's grabbing you, I typically just let them go. Honestly, if you're grabbing that, you know, on this level besides on the final 20 seconds, that can be a very easy way to get eliminated. The only time I really grab is when you see something like that, where you have a hole in the center and you don't want to get pushed to the left or right. This guy, yeah, <laughs> he just decides to jump off after he grabbed me for no reason. I don't really know exactly what happened there, but yeah, I'm getting grabbed a lot, so I, I do start grabbing back, but it's really, you know, just for fun. So looks like we're coming up on a minute left. Again, this is very relaxed. To be honest, a lot of people have asked about my mindset during the matches, and I've always found that I perform best when I'm relaxed. You know, I don't... See, I, I actually would have got the glitch there, but I decided to hop off. But anyway, yeah, I, I prefer to just be relaxed. I know it can get intense if you're on Jump Showdown, for example, and maybe it's you and another guy, and the round's been going like three to four minutes. Your heart can start pumping. That's definitely what mine does. But that's when I find I mess up. Obviously, if you work well under pressure, you know, great. But for me, I just find it easier to stay calm. This is a very chill game. I don't find any reason to stress about it. It's not like back when I played Warzone and I would get angry because you spend like 20, 30 minutes trying to get a win and then you get second place and you get nothing or someone on your team messes up. With this game, these matches are 10 minutes or less. If you get eliminated, cool, jump into the next one. I, I think that's why I like this game so much. And I also find it very easy to just stay relaxed. You know, I, I, I just don't think there's any need to stress about it. Obviously, if you're getting your first win, or, you know, you're working towards a big milestone, or maybe there's a skin you want and you got to get an extra crown. Which, by the way, I buy out every skin uh, that hits the store. I actually buy out the store every single day. So, I'm kind of out of stuff to buy right now. I was able to finally get Alex, which is nice, but I really like this banana skin with the inverted face. It's probably my favorite skin in the game right now. And I'll be using it in all my videos going forward, just because I think it looks really cool. All right, so now we got Fruit Shoot. Fruit Shoot, I hate that they've put this to where it can be round four. Like, nine people qualifying, six people qualifying on Fruit Shoot. It's just really, I don't know, I don't like it very much. I'm pretty good at Fruit Shoot and it's still frustrating. Like there, I, I feel like I should have avoided that, but I still ended up getting hit. And then I see one coming at me, so I jump dive to make sure that I have protection by the pyramid. I actually use that quite a bit now. If I'm in first place, I actually don't dive. You can just jump over the corner and stay on your feet, and it'll give you a good little bump forward. Not a ton, but enough. So, I end up getting hit by a strawberry here. You know, it's whatever. I feel like I'm still in a good spot to qualify. I'm not really worried about it. And I do, obviously. So yeah, that was that. And then next, we have Hexagon, which this Hexagon run, I, I loved. I, it was it was such a good run, and I was super happy that this ended up being my 200th win, and that I could show you guys. Just because, I mean, I haven't been getting Hexagon much, and it's my favorite map. It's like 100% my favorite map. I get the majority of my wins on Hexagon. I win Jump Showdown and Fall Mountain a lot too. Royal Fumble I'm good at, but 
Hexagon, if I get Hexagon, I honestly feel like I'm winning 8 out of 10 times. I, like, it's crazy. So yeah, let's go ahead and go over the Hexagon run and what happens. And I do mess up here too. But it's still a really good run. Alright, so I'll take you through my thought process here. I'm looking around. I see that there's some spaces over there, but I'm not worried about it. If you've watched my hexagon guide, I like to get to the end, or the edge, I'm sorry, the edge, and just start slow jumping. I run out of room really quick, but there's a lot of people up there, so I'm just looking on where to go, right? So I see the hot dog coming, I'm like, alright, I'll go to the other side, there's plenty of people over here. Chicken cuts me off, and I'm pretty sure, yep, that's where I messed up. I start, went to turn around, and the hex was already gone, It's so not a big deal. I see this guy, and I decide I'm going to grab him. I grab him, he falls, and I'm able to take this entire area to myself. Now, grabbing on hexagon... I get a lot of questions about it. I don't really know how to explain it. I'm going to I'm gonna try and explain it on the guide that I have coming out Monday. But really, the biggest thing that you can do is just grab as soon as you hit a hex and you want a quick, quick grab. After that, you just want to jump and or jump dive. So anyway, we're here. I'm seeing a guy coming up. So I see all that open purple space over there, and that's what I want to take. So I'm slow jumping. I'm going to see what the hot dog does, and he ends up missing the jump, which is hilarious to me. And so now that I know that I have all of this, I'm just planning out the best path possible. That hot, hot dog misses the jump. I decide I want to take up these, and I, I am pretty sure I end up hitting, like, every purple here, which is great. But you really do. You just want to plan out the best possible path so you can take up as much time as possible and let everyone else get eliminated. I see that we only have one person eliminated so far, but I'm assuming more people are going to get eliminated shortly. There goes someone. And then, yeah, we're just we're hitting all the purples as much as we can. If you're not comfortable and you don't feel confident in your ability to hit certain purples, don't. Just take your time. There's not a big deal. I see that there's only one yellow space below me, so I'm not really worried about it. I decide I'm just going to go ahead and jump on blue. So I make the blue jump. It's easy. And then from here, I'm just looking around to see where he is. I notice that I got one player to my right. He's got quite a bit of space, so I'm really hoping he doesn't come my direction. He doesn't. And I decide to jump to the left. Again, you need to take up as many spaces as possible. Once I see that those two are over there, I know I have the win because they're going to run out of space quicker than I do. So he jump dives, and that's it. That's going to be my 200th win. If you ended up sticking around for the whole video, thank you so much. YouTube really seems to want longer videos, but I prefer to keep my videos as long as they need to be. I don't like to have a lot of fluff in them, and I want to get directly to the point. So anyway, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have anything you believe I can do to improve on these gameplays going forward, please let me know in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, toss it a like please consider subscribing. Enjoy your day, and I'll see you next time.